Hey, what's up guys? Joker here. Today we are going to be taking a look at the performance generation versus generation going from the GTX 980 Ti to the 1080 Ti all the way up to the recently released RTX 2080 Ti. This is something that I have been wanting to look at ever since these cards were announced and I finally got a 980 Ti that I actually borrowed back from my brother. It was my it was actually my old reference model graphics card. All the cards used here today were reference models from NVIDIA. So I wanted to get that card back so that we could do some comparisons and see what the performance gains were generation on generation when it comes to just the percentage gained. And of course, we're going to have average FPS numbers and 1% lows and side-by-sides and all of that. But really the most interesting metric that I hope to convey at the end of this video is the percentages gained from one generation to the next. So we're going to get into all of that. But first, today's video is brought to you by Zero and Nine.com, where you could save money on PC games for all of your favorite platforms like Steam, Origin, Uplay, and more, as well as software like Windows 10 Pro or Microsoft Office Pro 2016. And if you use the code JOKERW at checkout, you can save 22% off your copy of Windows, which would bring the price down to $12.47, or you could use the code JOKER-S at checkout where you can save 10% on the entire website for anything you pick up over there. Please check out the link down in the description below. Now, as I said, I'm using reference models here for all of this testing, which was done at ultra settings at 1080p and 1440p. I didn't really want to focus too much on 4K as it doesn't really seem like what the 980 Ti is targeted for, and it was struggling in some of these titles even at 1440p, so um, those are the two resolutions I really wanted to focus on here, but I did do all of my testing at ultra settings. Now, just as a little bit of a history lesson before we get into the performance numbers, the 980 Ti came out back on June 2nd of 2015, and it launched for $649 for the reference design from NVIDIA, while the 1080 Ti came out on March 10th of 2017, so almost a full two years later, and that launched for just $50 more at $699, which is a reasonable price increase between generations, while the 2080 Ti, as I'm sure many of you know, just came out on September 20th of this year, 2018, and launched for a staggering $1,199. So you would expect with such a hefty price increase over the last generation that the performance would probably correlate to that. But no, that's actually really not the case at all. I'll go ahead and go through the system specs and setup right now while some of the side-by-side -side comparisons play in the background in case some of you aren't really aware of what I use for my testing. Now, I was testing at ultra settings at 1080p and 1440p, but all the side-by-sides you'll be seeing in this video were recorded and captured at 1440p. And the reason that I did that is because at 1080p, the RTX 2080 Ti is usually presented with a CPU bottleneck in some of the most intensive games. So we're going to be talking a lot about 1440p here, especially when it comes to percentages gained on generations so that we're not talking about something that's CPU bound. We really want to be looking at GPU bound here. Now for my system, I'm using an i7-7700K up at 4.9 gigahertz. So when we are running into that bottleneck, it's really just because the 2080 Ti is such a monster at 1080p, but 1440p, that's not really an issue. Uh, as I said, ultra settings, I am running on the latest drivers, which is 411.63 for all of this testing. And the test system I am using was running 16 gigabytes of RAM at 3000 megahertz, which shouldn't limit us in any way. And to be honest, going into this testing, I definitely expected to see a larger performance gain between the 980 Ti and the 1080 Ti, but I really didn't expect it to be as drastic as what you are seeing right now, where many of the games going from the 1080 Ti to the RTX 2080 Ti were down at like 10 to 20% in some cases in performance gained at 1440p. And the 980 Ti still definitely holds its own for those just curious about 980 Ti performance. Maybe if you're running on an older car trying to upgrade to something like an RTX 2080 Ti, there's definitely could be a case made for upgrading, but I don't really know if it's worth going out and spending $1,200 on a 2080 Ti, especially when the 1080 Ti's could be gotten for so much cheaper and they're comparable to the RTX 2080s as we've discussed in some previous videos. But, you know, at 1440p, there's definitely some games where it is falling behind a considerable amount, but this is ultra settings, keep in mind. So something in the 980 Ti for 1440p, which is comparable um, on the Pascal series to something like the 1070, you could certainly run 
pretty much every modern game at 1440p in high settings and get a smooth and playable frame rate. This is really just ultra settings, you know, kind of doing its thing and it can be pretty brutal when it comes to average frame rates and 1% lows, which we're going to get into in just a minute. But first, I want to go ahead and show you the average, per the percentages gained generation on generation for the different games that I tested. And this is probably going to be the one of the most shocking graphs that you have seen since the RTX cards coming out. We'll start off at the left side here with Assassin's Creed Origins. You could see that going from the 1080 Ti to the 2080 Ti, it only gained 12.8%. And once again, this is at 1440p. All the percentage gains calculations that I did were at 1440p so that we were talking about just a GPU bound scenario and no situations where the CPU could have possibly gotten in the way of keeping up with the 2080 Ti. And then with the 980 Ti to the 1080 Ti, we saw a gain of 69.57%. That is a huge generational performance leap going from Maxwell to Pascal, but while going from Pascal to Turing, it's barely anything at all, and that is pretty much the case across the board. I mean, we do have a couple of outliers like Wolfenstein 2, which we know had some big optimizations for Vulcan. That got an improvement of 44.9% over the previous generation for Turing, but when it came to Pascal and Maxwell, that still was a very large performance gain there, where it got a 91.67 performance increase, almost 100% gain in that game, and many of those titles, we're looking at like over 80% gained, um, 80% 80, 80, 80 gained from going from Maxwell to Pascal. So that is a huge leap forward in terms of average FPS performance between those two generations. And the overall, at the end of the day, ended up coming out with the 980 Ti going to the 1080 Ti to being a 76.3% improvement in performance while the 1080 Ti to the $1,200 Touring card was just a measly 27.46%, which really should give a whole lot of credence to, you know, what many people have said with this current generation, with the 2080 performing so closely to the 1080 Ti, is that the 2080 Ti should have really been the 2080, while the 2080 should have really been the 2070, and then we could have gotten a Ti at a later date, which would have given us performance increases like we saw here with Pascal versus Maxwell. So I really don't know what NVIDIA was thinking with this whole launch and charging $1,200 for this card, which is barely getting 20 to 30% and even lower than, 20, lower than 20% in several of these games here that I tested. So we're going to go ahead and we'll go through the average FPS and the 1% lows now as well for 1440p and 1080p, and you'll see the numbers that all of those percentages were based on here with 1440 and the average FPS. And as I said, the 980 Ti definitely um, struggles at ultra settings in some of these titles. I mean, for a lot of, most of them actually, Battlefield 1, Gears 4, Wolfenstein 2, Strange Brigade, and Sniper Elite 4, as well as Rainbow Six Siege, all averaging over 60 frames per second, but Far Cry 5, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and Assassin's Creed Origins, which are some of the most demanding games coming out in the past year, those did fall behind on averages at 60 FPS, but again, that's 1440p uh, ultra settings. If you played it at high at 1440p, I bet those averages would probably come up over 60 FPS. And we'll go ahead and look at the 1% lows now here, where the 980 Ti, again, definitely struggles to stay over 60, while the other cards are doing very well here um, when it comes to the 1% lows. So the 980 Ti is kind of showing its age a bit when it comes to, you know, 1440p ultra settings, but by no means do you definitely need to go out and upgrade that card right away, let alone to a $1,200 card, even though the performance increase would be like probably 100% plus, you know, going between two generations, but I would have liked to have seen something close to that going between the 1080 Ti and the RTX 2080 Ti, if I'm being honest. And looking at 1080p averages, you'll see once again, what I was talking about with the CPU bottleneck being an issue, even with a processor running at 4.9 gigahertz, you'll see that a lot of the games with, with the 2080 Ti and the 1080 Ti, not all of them, but some of them are close within like a couple of frames here, like way closer than they actually should be. Like Assassin's Creed Origins, Gears of War 4 got the exact same frame rate at 1080p on ultra settings, and that, that's a CPU bottleneck just really being introduced there, and there's not too much that you could do about it. I mean, we're running a processor at 4.9 um, that really shouldn't get in the way, but when you're talking about a card as powerful as the 2080 Ti, that's really just the situation that you've run into, where just a couple of years ago, you would have had to run a game at like 720p on low settings to really start to introduce a CPU bottleneck, but now we're seeing it even at ultra settings, and that's the case as well 
with the 1080p 1% lows, you're just going to see a lot of games where it's really neck and neck between the 1080 Ti and the 2080 Ti. But that's going to wrap it up for all of the testing that I did here with the reference models 980 Ti, 1080 Ti, 2080 Ti. Do you want to, you know, I look forward to your guys' comments and discussion down below because I'm sure this is going to raise a lot of insight from different people and how they feel about this with NVIDIA charging $1,200 for these cards, which are barely an incremental upgrade over the last generation. Really what we're getting is glorified Pascal with tensor cores and RT cores thrown in there for, you know, a technology that is still yet to come. DLSS, that kind of thing, still not really available. So yeah, we'll have to wait and see if those technologies do mature and become worthwhile when you're talking about the price tag put onto these new NVIDIA cards. But right now, just looking at rasterization performance, it seems kind of insulting when it comes to the price on the 2080 Ti compared to the last generations and even the 2080. I just saw the 2070 is going to be selling for $600. And if I were a betting man, I would say that the 2070 is probably going to perform almost identically to a GTX 1080, except it's going to be selling for $600. And now you can find 1080s for around $400 to maybe $500 for some of the harder to find custom add-in board cards. So let me know your thoughts down below. Stay tuned for the next video. All of the 1440p footage that I captured for benchmarking on this video, I'm going to be uploading in a side-by-side -side video with these three cards, just like I did with the ultra-wide and the initial review when I had, you know, the performance metrics and everything. So if you just want to see the benchmarks run, um, that'll be the very next video going up tomorrow. So stay tuned for that if you are interested in seeing that type of thing. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this video or learned something new, don't forget to leave a like on it down below. Subscribe if you're not already. And if you've been here for a while, you can always ring the notification bell. That way you never miss a moment of content on the channel. And I will see you guys next time for another video. Tara.